Have you ever considered what it's like to immerse yourself in a sound bath? Well, today I have you covered. Join me as I invite a special guest to dive into the unique experience of a sound bath and spill all the details on the after bath. Welcome to the Afterbath, where we explore unique experiences and wellness practices. I'm your host, Matt. Today we have a special episode where we'll be diving into the world of sound baths. If you've ever wondered what it's like to be immersed in soothing sound waves, you're in for a treat. In episode 5 of the Afterbath, our sound bath participant, Shell, embarks on her fifth consecutive sound bath, diving deeper into the world of transcendence. After a week of effortless ease, Shell radiates an unshakable calm and clarity like never before. But as her journey deepens, questions arise. Is this transformation here to stay? Can she maintain her newfound serenity when life's challenges inevitably return? Keep watching to witness Shell's ongoing journey filled with growth, peace and the unknown. Will this be lasting change or just a beautiful moment in time? Welcome back, Shell. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> so this is sound bath number five. Coming up. Yeah. How was this week? Lovely. Great. Wow, that's quite a change. Definitely. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what's different? Before we get into what's different, yeah. all of the changes I noticed. Yep. I want to make a clarification about last week. Got it. Yeah. So you mentioned that I seemed drained, mm. but that really wasn't my experience. Oh, okay. Yeah, I wasn't drained at all, not physically nor emotionally. And I think Got it's it. really important to clarify that because sure. I wouldn't want your listeners to get the impression that going through this sequence that there's going mm. to be a point where they get exhausted because it really wasn't exhaustion. Got it. Okay, what was it? So, after sound bath number three, mm. I felt something melt away from me mm -hmm. and emotions came up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yucky emotions, the defensive emotions, and that made me feel vulnerable and uncomfortable, mm. rattled. My my feathers were ruffled, yeah, mm, mm. and I didn't know how to operate in the new me, ah, yeah. Yeah, So it. really uncomfortable feelings but mm. really positive that it mm. got to that point. Yep. At no point, however, did I feel that that was an exhausting process. Ah, I wasn't exhausted by... Okay. The uncovering, I wasn't exhausted by the emotions coming up. Yeah. I just felt really uncomfortable that my MO had to change, yeah? Got it. I think that's super important to make that clarification that I didn't feel drained because mm. I think what I'm learning through this process, mm -hmm. and it's a long process, it's not one sound bath, what mm -hmm. I'm learning through this process is just how gentle it is and non-exhausting it is. It's giving me energy mm. because it's taking away the things that drain my energy. Ah, so I wasn't drained. I was it. being removed of the things that drained me. Yeah. If we're talking about modes of therapy, yeah. if I liken this to talk therapy, mm. for example, completely mm -hmm. different. Mm. I think if you could, if you go into thought, talk therapy about what I what came up, which was that defensiveness, mm. and then have that experience of forty five minutes of relating whatever it is you think mm. happened, wherever, whenever, mm -hmm. you could come out of that feeling drained mm. rather than energized, rather than relieved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What I found with this process is that. Whatever brought me to that point of release, or mm. I take a step back, whatever brought me, whatever was uncovered didn't need a reason. Got it. It didn't require me to look back and investigate 
Mm. The reasons for what I felt simply didn't matter and they didn't come up. My brain did not spend a moment or any Mm. energy looking into the past and trying to unearth something. It just, in this process, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So it's not an exhausting process. It's not a draining process at all. Yeah. For instance, today I'll go in for my sound bath, whatever I may have on my mind that might feel yucky, ex- yeah. not that there is, yeah. but just saying, by the time I'm in there mm. and I'm out of there, whatever it was doesn't matter anymore. Mm. Got it. It just melts away. Yeah. There's no investigative process. Would that be a little bit like, you know, sometimes people go, oh, I don't want to open up the can because it's a can of worms and I'll have to pick through the worms. Really what you're saying is you open up the can and actually the worms have dissolved. (laughs) We love analogies, don't we? (laughs) (laughs) Or maybe they've wiggled away but they're they're nowhere to be found anymore. You don't have to pick through anything. It's the proverbial Pandora's box and I imagine that We all never want to open our Pandora's box because we just don't know what's going to leap out and bite us. Mm, Yeah. This process I found that the box just gets melted away Mm. and anything that's in it... Dissolves with it, I guess. It just dissolves with it. It Mm. is so easy. Mm. Which brings me to this week. Great. (laughs) It's a really interesting process because yeah. it's subtle. Yeah. Everything that happens as a result of the ongoing sound baths mm. is subtle. Yeah. This is going to sound weird. Yeah. Okay. Let's just. I'll just get. Okay. <laughs> go for it. Yeah. Get weird. Yeah. Away. Let's. Let's go weird. That's right. cool. So I've always got a to-do list. Yeah. It plagues me. I have been trained and programmed to be productive. Yep. So rest is just <laughs> not part of my life. Yeah, yeah. So I've always got to have something uh, to work on. And yeah. a, like, I've got a list now, haven't yeah. I? I've got, a, I've got yeah. a list in there. There's a list. There's, there's a to-do list. So there's yeah. never really an off time. Uh, this week, two things happen, and the first one's really strange. Mm. I know that there's things that I have to get done, yep. and there's never enough time to get it all done so that I can get to the rest point. Mm. Mm-hmm. It felt like there were suddenly gaps in time. I do not have an analogy oh. to explain this. I Actually, I do have an analogy. Yeah, yeah, okay. It was like I had extra time. If, if time was linear... yeah. And I needed to get everything done from this time to that time. Yeah. And there was no extension of time if it was linear. Yeah. It was as if, and it was almost as if I could see it. Yeah. That there'd be an expansion. Yeah. Somewhere. And there would be more time. Yeah. Yeah in there mm. the the only thing that i can liken it to because it's so hard to explain even i don't get it mm. it was a, a change of perception yeah of having more time yep yeah bonus time it was like imagine you're out of money mm. you're down the street mm-hmm. you've bought something you look in your wallet yeah you're out of money or your, your card or your watch or whatever you you do your money with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's tapped out and it's binging and bonging at you and going, nah. And you go, dang it. Yeah. Put the thing down. You put your pens in your pocket and you find that there's 50 bucks. Right, And yeah. then you go into another pocket and there's 100 and you just go, what? Yeah. Bonus. Yeah. There's bonus money. It was yeah. just hidden in places. There, there were these little – so that was what – the time felt like mm. it felt like there were these pockets yeah that opened up with extra in it yep okay yep. i i'm in where we land now <laughs> it's yeah. a really strange experience but 
there was a relief. Yeah. There was, yeah, there was just this rest Mm. that time was not finite and that I would be able to get through whatever I needed to get through on the to-do list Mm. with ease because there was now these extra pockets that had opened up to me with bonus time, which brings me Mm. to the to-do list itself. Yes. So this was the second really subtle thing that I noticed. Mm -hmm. I am a list maker. There's always going to be a list. Yeah. There's about six of them on my fridge for different things. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. This is what I do. Yeah. Yeah. This time, this week, after sound bath number four, what I noticed was I was not thinking about the next thing to do. I was not thinking about what was on that list. Mm. I would just do the thing, do the action, and it was as if the rest of it had no hold on me. It wasn't that it didn't matter. It wasn't that I didn't want to get it done. Yeah. But it no longer occupied any thought Mm. whatsoever. Yes. It didn't have a hold on my thinking or my energy I wasn't pulled by it yeah as I went off to do something else yeah it there is this weird melting away of things yeah it's not quite the same as when did I talk about the distancing that feeling of padded maybe that was in sound bath after sound bath number two Mm. I talked about feeling distanced from the noise of life Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it not impacting me. Yeah. It's kind of like that Mm. but subtler. Mm. So those were – just check if there's anything else on my list. (laughs) (laughs) Your to-do list. (laughs) My my remember to tell Matt what happened list. (laughs) Uh, No. Yeah, yeah. All done. So what I've – I'm going to have to do a report card about this whole process Mm. post number six because Mm -hmm. there's just so much. Yeah. What I'm finding so far is that it is so gentle and Mm. so subtle Mm. in its movement of things that locked me into a certain position that I, if I was not doing this protocol with you and deliberately being mindful Mm. of what is happening and what's changing, I wouldn't notice that I'm feeling better. Yeah. Yeah. And it's better, definitely it's a mental mental shift. It's definitely Mm. a meditation. Oh, this this is the third thing. This came to me as I was driving here. This is cheating. Okay. (laughs) I, I am not kidding you at all. Yeah, yeah. 100% 100% this yeah. is this is the cheat sheet yeah. <laughs> to mental health. Yeah. I had no idea that doing a protocol yeah. of repeated sound therapies yeah. could get me to this beautiful place of ease yeah. so quickly with absolutely no effort. It's yeah. cheating. Yeah. One hundred percent. It's very easy. <laughs> it's very easy. Episode one. Yeah. I talked about having a process. Yeah, I do my prayers and I've learned a few meditative practices. Yeah. I've definitely been able to get those snatches of spaciousness. Yeah. In my mind, it may only last for thirty seconds or a minute. But I can do it now, right? Yeah. I talked about at that time feeling that I'd stopped making significant progress. Yeah. With that inner calm thing. Yeah. That I was still moving forward, but it was like moving my my legs through mud or just something Mm. that had resistance. Yeah. Yeah. That is still a process of effort. It's still Mm -hmm. a process of my will against the resistance. Mm. 
there is absolutely no effort yeah. required for me to get to this better space. Yeah. By lying there under the cosy blankets, it is 100% yeah. cheating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, to add something to that, um, I have a pretty good lifestyle. Like, I, my lifestyle's great. You know, like, I, I'm a music teacher, so I can just sit around and make music all day and I teach, you know, essentially students, but, you know, I think of them as friends. Is it just wonderful? They turn up every week. I get paid very well. Yet, I'm happy to push all that aside just to do this one thing. Because to have this really easy life and see everyone else around me suffering, but I know I can do something about it, and it's so easy... It seems, well, it's ridiculous. I it can't is do ridiculous. It. it is the antithesis of hustle culture. Yeah. I got more done. Yeah. On my list. Yeah. In this last week, my place is so angelic now. Yeah. Because those pockets of space opened up. Things are. Like, I'm pretty tidy anyway, yeah. but there's another level of tidiness now because there's ease. Yeah. I cannot begin to... Ex- I'm not... F- I should clarify that I don't feel it all the time. It hasn't lasted. Sure. That sense yeah. of ease has not been sustained during the week. I felt it so acutely and beautifully yeah. last week after sound bath number four. Yeah. It's sublime. Yeah. I want that all the time, please. <laughs> I want that all the time, the ease. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. Such a tonic to life. Yeah. What I realised with the ease is that I can still do everything, do more, in fact. Yeah, you can do more. With ease rather than hustle. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it doesn't seem fair because... Yeah. It's not I've the ultimate told, hack. It's not the ultimate hack. Just lie there and let you play the balls. <laughs> it, it, it seriously yeah, is. Anyway, yeah. back to you. I'm so sorry I inter- no, no. interrupted. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was it. That was it. Yeah, to not offer this service is, I wouldn't say it's criminal, but it, it feels almost criminal because, you know, I can, I can offer this service that's, you know, like if... If I gave someone the option, look, I can teach you to play the guitar or I can make your life beyond amazing, I think you would choose the second one. Guitar seems, it's nice, but it pales in comparison. And if I was just going to go, oh, I'm just going to sit in my studio now and just write songs. If I said to someone, look, you can either listen to one of my songs or I can make your life amazing. (laughs) Uh, the songs don't even come, you know, like, yeah. That <laughs> so definitely, definitely the sound baths. I had a moment during the week where the ease hit me. Yeah. I thought, what if everyone was walking around like this? Yeah. What if everyone just felt this ease? Yeah. I really want to hone in on that word as opposed to peace. Yeah. Peace feel, felt a little different. Yeah. That was that blissful state yeah. I experienced in one and two. Yeah. Ease is a bit different. Yeah. But I kind of like it even better. Yeah. Because yeah. I can still get stuff done. Yeah. Bliss is like something you do on the weekend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you got a bit of time to, you know, take off and you just want to... You know, look it's like at, a country trip. Yeah, look <laughs> at the stars, smell the flowers. It's amazing. It's beautiful Those for those times where you need a little bit extra, you know, rest. Mm. But if, you're, if you've got a job to do, uh, bliss is probably not the, the best thing. <laughs> mm. 
because you'll be a bit clumsy. You'll be a bit clumsy. So bliss is only... Bliss comes after you've, you know, like squashed fear. Once you've squashed fear, bliss naturally arises. And then after bliss, then comes this, uh, you know, like full... Uh, whether you want to call it cosmic consciousness or Christ consciousness or this awakening where you're totally clear. There's probably lots of words for it. But it's where you're essentially, you, you say it's enlightened. Yeah. I thought about that word and it's such a overused word and mm. it has, I think, now negative connotations to some extent. Well, or it's one that yeah. people resist. But if I just broke it down, to to it meant something different to me this week when I felt the ease mm. because I just removed the end from the light and I thought about yeah. light not as in sunlight but as in feeling light. Yeah. Just feeling unburdened. Yeah. And end is to make that feeling of feeling light yeah feeling the relief the liberation mm. so if i think of it in that that sense yeah if everybody could just feel light unburdened mm. free breathe yeah there certainly wouldn't be any more crime you reckon well could you imagine being a criminal like this you, no <laughs> this is way too, way too yeah, this is way too nice. Even if you have no money, right, and you had to beg, you'd still be like, that's all right, it'll work out. Really? I'll find my way. Jeez. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm really wanting to keep up this ease thing. I don't yeah. know how yeah. after number six it will. I will be able to keep that treasure yeah but i really hope Mm. i really hope for that one well simply all it is is like anything it just requires practice that's all it is i can't give myself a sound bath (laughs) (laughs) no but you know there's other practices you can do okay yeah yeah meditation chanting all types of things yeah yoga um and possibly a little bit of everything yeah I mean, you can always come back and have another sand bath anytime you want. Yeah. I mean, that's just what I do with my life. I have practices that I do throughout the day. And um, it's like like anything. You know, you've you, you got to sleep, got to eat, got to go to the bathroom. You do all these things, you don't complain about them. You just go, oh, yeah. And they're just practices. And as you do the practices more and more, they become more more stable. And so it's less effort, or hardly any effort. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and then other things come about. You might find then that you eat less. And then you might find, maybe I don't need to sleep as much. And then some of the other things that I used to do, maybe not as fulfilling anymore, so I dropped them as well. And then life becomes, well, probably more practices, but simpler and more joyful or more ease. Yeah, more ease. So really all you're doing is just trading bad habits for good habits. That's all it is. Yeah. So I don't look at the way I was previous to this and go, oh, the good old days. You know, a friend of mine said to me, the you know, uh, sent me a text saying, oh, the good old days about, you know, when we were back in uh, the uni days. And I was like, yeah, I guess they were fun days, definitely, but <laughs> not as fun as now. <laughs> Nowhere near as fun as now. So I don't look back and go, oh, I wish I was, you know, 18 or 19 or 20. Those were the good old days. I kind of go, no, those days were were interesting. 
<laughs> and sometimes very stressful. Um, but, you know, back then, certainly not any better. Different, not better. Yeah, I feel that now is a billion times better. Yeah. A billion times better. I mean, if I had have known what I know now back then, now that would have been amazing. <laughs> but I don't even contemplate that. That's ridiculous to contemplate. So I don't think about that. Yeah. Anything else? That's good. Nothing else. Fantastic. What do you think? Should we go and have number five? Jump in the bath. Okay. Here we go. Great. Let's do it. A sound bath is like a warm hug for your senses, using sound waves to wash over you and melt away stress. Picture yourself lying down in a cosy, serene space with the gentle vibrations of Tibetan singing bowls, gongs, tuning forks and chimes, creating a soothing soundscape around you. It's not just about hearing the sounds, it's about feeling them too. These vibrations work on a deeper level, helping your body and mind to let go of tension and find a natural rhythm of relaxation. The idea is to let the sounds guide you into a peaceful, meditative state where you can just be. No stress, no worries, just pure calm. A sound bath isn't about doing anything, it's about being in the moment and letting the vibrations do the work. Whether you're looking to reset after a tough day or you just want a little bit of time to yourself, a sound bath offers a unique way to recharge, find balance and reconnect with your inner peace. So, Shell, welcome. I'm back. <laughs> so you're now post sound bath. Number five. How are you feeling now? Very relaxed. Great. Awake. Yes, you look very awake. Your eyes are very bright. And very calm. Your composure is very calm. Yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> and um, compared to the other sound baths, what's the feeling like now? Last week, so number yeah. four and number five are very similar. Yes. I am not all in my heaven bliss state at all. Yeah. There are no physical sensations. Yeah. It's just feeling comfortable in my own skin, feeling awake. Yeah. I've been thinking about what this awake feeling is. I think last week you said once you get a taste of being awake, mm. you don't want to go back. Mm. And I didn't really understand what you meant until this past week where things started to feel really easy, mm. fluid, effortless. Yeah. I was able to make decisions much faster. This whole being awake thing. And then... It occurred to me why you wouldn't want to go back. So yeah. about 10 years ago, I was very sick with FODMAPs. So oh. FOD, you know about FODMAPs, in, inability to digest sugars. Mm. So oh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think I've had it all my life. Mm. I had it all my life. Mm -hmm. But it got to a, a particular year and it was really distressing and mm. I thought okay I really need to do something about this and I just tested I just tested myself one day I had a spoonful of yogurt mm. which was sweetened with apple juice mm. and that was it that's all I had all day and yep. I was bloated wow. like like I was about to give birth. I was yeah. nine months out. But oh, it dear. wasn't just the bloating. It was the distressed feeling changed my mood as mm. well. I couldn't concentrate. I had brain fog. Mm. I was edgy. Mm. I hadn't done anything except 
it just this inability to digest as it turned out. So I thought it's got to stop, went to the mm. doctor, thought it might have been all sorts of different things. Mm. Doctor kind of had an idea. It's probably FODMAP, sent me for a test, sure enough, mm-hmm. off the charts. Mm. I thought, right, I need to do something about this because I'm sick of the pain. Yeah. I'm sick of feeling like this. Mm. Not just the physical pain, it was the it was the brain fog, all all the things I just described. Mm. So I went to the dietitian and she says, If you want to cure your gut, you're going to have to change your diet to exclude all of these different sugars. And as it turned out, there was only one sugar that I could because there's many different types of sugars. Yeah. Yeah. There's isotol, mannitol, sorbitol, mm. uh, ex, ex, some gum, I can't, haven't yeah. said that properly, yeah. fructose and there's sucrose. Mm. As it turned out, the only one that I can digest is sucrose, which is cane sugar. Right. But all the others I can't digest, ah. which is why this was happening. Uh-huh. And most things have some form, most foods have some form of one of these yeah. sugars. Yeah. So I had to change... I had the option to change by studying all of the different sugars mm. and which foods had which sugars mm-hmm. to minimise. You can't not eat. Yeah. But to minimise the ones that were giving me the most grief. Mm. Onions, garlic wow. were the worst offenders. And they're wow. just about in everything. Yeah. So it's it, the base of many different types of curries. Mm. It's in our chutneys, mm. our preserves, our spreads. Yeah. It was really hard to get away from it. Mm. That was more of a problem than any t- type of fruit. Mm. Yeah. But I was committed. Mm-hmm. I wanted it. I wanted to feel better. Mm. So I studied this wad of papers she Mm -hmm. gave me and I memorised what was in everything Mm. and then I went about changing the way I cooked. Amazing. It took me about three years. Yep. But I fixed it. And now I can eat any type of fruit, garlic, onions, etc. Wow. With very minimal distension. Mm Mm-hmm. But it took the commitment of Mm. wanting to be well yeah. and never wanting that feeling again. Yes. So when you talked about being awake yeah. and not wanting to go back yeah. and getting a bit of a taste of it today yeah. and last week yes, as opposed to the tripping, yes, yeah. it is such a feeling of freedom. Yeah. Another example was I had childhood asthma. I spent my entire childhood struggling mm. to take a breath, especially mm. at night time. Mm. And anyone who's ever struggled mm. with asthma or ever struggled to breathe, um, for me, thankfully, I just grew out of it. Mm. I just, I don't know how, I just grew out of it. Mm-hmm. So I was free after a while. Mm. But childhood was... It was excruciating because I didn't have energy. I could not get good restful sleep Mm. because I simply was clogged all the time. Yeah. So the freedom Mm -hmm. and anyone who struggled to breathe, anyone who's had asthma or something that's compromised their breathing Mm. knows the exhaustion Mm. that comes from not having that fluidity of breath, yeah? Yeah. And when you get it, Mm. when you clear whatever you have to clear Mm. to be able to breathe normally, Mm. just just be normal, just normal, it is liberation. It's like someone let you out of jail. So similarly... Yeah. We love metaphors in this. Yeah, we love our <laughs> we love metaphors. our similes and yes. metaphors and our anal- analogies in this podcast. Yeah. When I had that feeling of being undistracted, mm. no thoughts going through, no to do lists going, no, I have to be somewhere else. Yeah, there's a next thing to do. I'm just here, and it's lovely. Yeah, and I'm fully awake. Yeah, and rested. And at ease, it's like being 
able to breathe yeah. and being free of pain and knowing what that this is what's normal is meant to be. Yeah. This is meant this is normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my normal was something pretty different. Yeah. 2 weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. And it, it will revert to the the my normal when I leave. <laughs> <laughs> but if I can bottle this a bit. Yeah. It's such a wonderful feeling to be fully rested and fully awake. Yes. It's health. Yeah. It's mental health. Yeah. I yeah. like it. Yeah, it's good. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, from making the commitment, if if there's some way that I can make that same type of mm. commitment to feel like this, yeah. the way I did with my gut health. Yeah. It's definitely worth doing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I got. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, thank that's you, great. Matt. My thank, pleasure. Thank <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my pleasure. Um, I guess from my own experience in what you're talking about, I remember for a long time I had a lot of social anxiety. But I wasn't even aware that it was social anxiety. What did it feel like? Well, actually, all it was most of the time was that I'd have interfering thoughts. You know, I'd be sitting with someone and then a silly thought would pop into my head. And I'd be like, oh, that's a really distracting thought and not a very nice thought. And it would usually be about the other person. And because I would be so busy trying to, you know, like push that thought away I would forget about what the person was talking about and then I'd be looking at them and then I'd go oh I hope you haven't realized that I'm not listening because I'm really busy trying to push away these ugly thoughts I'm having about you (laughs) wow I've never heard of that as a manifestation of social anxiety wow yeah So then when I was around, you know, people out in public, I would get this anxiety of like, oh, I hope these thoughts aren't going to pop up. And then I'd start to get anxious around other people with all the, you know, judgmental thoughts. And it would be judgmental thoughts about other people I was with. And and it was uncontrollable. It was like I'd totally lost control of it and I think maybe as a kid you know as a kid you do it you judge other people well some people do I mean I certainly did and and it was a way of making myself feel good you know boosting my ego oh yeah this person's got a funny haircut or this person has a funny nose or this person walks funny or this person is whatever and I would notice these things And it would be like, oh, yeah, I'm so glad I don't have those attributes. (laughs) Probably not realising they were probably thinking about that, about me. (laughs) I'm so glad I'm not this poor sucker. (laughs) And, um, And for a long time I struggled with that, yeah. Um, And it was probably through playing a lot of music that I started to realise, oh, if I play a lot of music, then when I go out in public, I feel pretty good. And I always thought about, oh, maybe it's because, you know, because I'm a songwriter and because I have a certain amount of discipline and I want to get my work out of the way, then I can go and relax. But maybe what I hadn't factored into was that because I had sat down and practiced for six hours, I was pretty blissed out. <laughs> and so when I'd go out in public, there wasn't any of that, those interfering thoughts. And the interfering thoughts really just coming about because, probably because deep down inside I was pretty stressed. I was pretty unhappy because I wasn't where I was. You know, I wasn't, you know, making millions of dollars out of my songwriting or something ridiculous like that. Just simply I wasn't happy with with my circumstance in life. And so it would come out, it would come out in um, unhappiness. And then that unhappiness would be judgment of other people. I uh, may not be making 
you know, like uh, any money out of my songwriting, but at least I'm not this person. <laughs> and, uh, and so when all of those interfering thoughts started to subside, it was like, oh, I should feel really pretty good. Yeah. So. Hmm. And from the music making you feel relaxed, yeah. we've moved to sound bathing, yeah, that's making other right. people feel relaxed. That's right, that's right, yeah, yeah. I think that's the funny thing, you know, ever since I was little, I always wanted to make music that made people feel great. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the hope of most musicians? I think yeah. so. I think so. But uh, I think um, it was not quite the path that I was expecting to take. I was expecting to write songs and for people to be enjoying the music on a different level rather than me actually playing singing bowls and people having it on a... Wow, a different level, a different level, yeah. It's definitely a different level. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I got there in the end, but just a different path. <laughs> you took the scenic route. Yeah, I took the scenic route, yeah, yeah. So nonetheless, it is fantastic to see you looking really clear. Mm. Yeah, really clear. Your eyes look really bright. You look very awake. It's amazing. Yay! Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything else? No, that's that's good. That's probably a good place to close the podcast. So anyway, we'll we'll be looking forward to the last sound bath next week. Yeah. Fantastic. Number six. Number six. The yeah. end of the protocol. Yeah, yeah. So my hope for that is by that stage you'll have enough memory of this situation, this experience, that you can continue to man manifest it on a daily basis mm. through your memory or maybe you have your own practice that you do, whether it's meditation or something like that, but you can keep it alive and keep it going. Mm. Mm. And well, and if you struggle, you can always come back for another sample. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no worries. Thanks, yes. Shell. Thank you, Matt. See you next week. See you next week. Cheers. Thank you for joining us today. This has been a fascinating exploration of sound baths. If you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe and leave a comment. Join us again next week as Shell completes her journey with her sixth and final sound bath. Until next time, stay well and keep exploring new experiences.